Uh, well, the area of algorithms has gone through explosive growth in the last 20 years, and it's been eight years since our last edition. Uh, we have now new technologies such as multi-core. There's some wonderful new algorithms that uh, people have developed and companies that have been founded on the premise of uh, having a new, better ways of solving their problems. So we wanted to bring that kind of uh, current uh, uh, enthusiasm and current uh, knowledge uh, in the area of algorithms uh, to the current generation of students and practitioners. So in the new edition, we've uh, created uh, 100 new exercises and 28 new problems. Uh, we also have taught a lot of this material already at our, uh, my co-authors and I have taught this at uh, our respective institutions. And have uh, and so have actually had a lot of practice with uh, some of the material that we're teaching in the new uh, edition. Uh, we've uh, put a little bit more focus on uh, practical applications. We've uh, redesigned the pseudocode uh, somewhat to make it a little bit more compatible uh, with existing uh, modern parallel programming practice. So we put a, a fair amount of effort into um, you know into just the basics of. Uh, making something that was current and up to date. Well, the uh, the four of us, of course, originally were all at MIT, but now uh, Tom uh, Corman is at uh, at Dartmouth, and Cliff Stein is at Columbia, and so uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, we needed to meet a few times, but uh, but pretty much we were able to do most of our cooperation over uh, the internet. The, um, you know, in particular, there's a, uh, you know, for me, I spent a lot of time on a new chapter on multi-threading. And this was sort of, um, you know, Ron in the past, in the first edition, had put a bunch of time into uh, number theory, which is particular research background, and cryptography. And Cliff, when he came on board with the second edition, uh, put a lot of effort into linear programming and network flow and scheduling. And so uh, my research for the last 15 years has been predominantly on uh, multi-threaded algorithms. And so it's been great to spend uh, time uh, on that chapter and really uh, making this material accessible to uh, undergraduates and uh, practitioners because this is, I think, becoming a mature area now. And yet many people aren't aware very much of, uh, of some of the um, uh, great advances that we've had in multi-threaded algorithms. So, um, so Tom was, uh, you know, was the uh, CEO of our enterprise here. Um, he's the one who had all the energy and did all the revisions. Uh, but I shouldn't characterize his work as, as, you know, mainly administrative, even though he did carry the administrative uh, workload as well. Uh, he uh, did a whole bunch of revisions to the data structures, making them cleaner, making them simpler. Uh, implementing new data structures, uh, uh, descriptions of new data structures such as uh, Van M. de Boas priority queues, and also um, he actually sat down and wrote uh, uh, code for every algorithm in the book to verify that it was, uh, you know, that we were correct uh, in uh, what we're presenting there. And so he, you know, implemented all those algorithms, tested all those algorithms. And uh, out of that uh, came up with some amazing simplifications. There's one place, for example, where he was improving the red-black tree data structures. And I looked at it and I said, oh, you know, I want to, you know, I want to try to write it in a different way. And basically, gradually, I wrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it. And in the end, I ended up with something that I discovered was basically uh, in the same direction that Tom had gone, but it was inferior. And his solution was was just this elegant, beautiful solution to the um, uh, to how to actually express red black trees in a more compact fashion. So really, you know, he did a beautiful job on uh, on a lot of aspects, and was the the energy and and force that brought us all together to make this happen. Well, multi-threading uh, has become a really hot topic uh, generally in uh, computer science because of the wide availability now of, uh, of parallel uh, 
computers. You can, you know, it's hard to buy a single processor computer now. And uh, that wasn't the case uh, when we published our last edition, the second edition. Uh, but in the intervening time, uh, the um, uh, microcomputer vendors have found it impossible to just simply make their processors faster, and they've been forced to build multiprocessors. So suddenly, there's a huge need for people to understand how to, uh, to uh, program these uh, multi-core uh, uh, processors, and yet there's very little um, that is outside of sort of the pure research realm that makes it accessible for people to, to, to and students and practitioners to actually uh, accomplish, uh, uh, you know, the programming of a parallel computer. And so what we tried to do in this chapter is bring this material down to the level of undergraduates. The multi-threading chapter is, uh, is very close to my heart because uh, many of the concepts that we teach there come directly out of my own research, uh, in particular over the last 15 years on Silk and Silk++. Plus Plus. Uh, one of the things that's, that's, I think, beautiful about the model that we present there for programming is that it admits a really nice theoretical treatment and it works well in practice. Uh, it's based on the key notions of work and span, work being the uh, amount of time that a serial uh, program takes to execute, um, and span being essentially the critical path length, if you will, of the computation. And with those two measures, if you take their ratio, you get the parallelism of your application. And that has given us, gives us a uh, very um, clean theoretical way of dealing with parallelism that turns out to work well in practice. We also cover some things like race bugs and reliability, and, uh, but uh, most of the chapter is made up of going through worked examples showing how you can use the concepts of work and span to analyze uh, many different kinds of algorithms and understand where the performance bugs are and where, you know, for some algorithms you can say, gee, this looks like I've made it parallel, but in fact you don't get much speed up. And with the techniques that we provide there, you can go right in and figure out where is the place that you have your performance bottleneck and because you have inadequate parallelism and so forth. We've um, adopted uh, a pseudocode, which is very similar to the work that we did with Silk and Silk++. Plus Plus. It's just three keywords that the uh, uh, students have to learn, so it's very, very low overhead uh, to get engaged in uh, learning um, this uh, material. And what's neat is that when the students have designed any given algorithm or whatever in this, um, uh, you know, for a multi-thread algorithm, whatever, they actually can go and program that and run it on a computer and it will run well. Algorithms are fun. Uh, they're interesting. They're also hard. Uh, I think that algorithms are a big growth area, uh, in particular because uh, the technology keeps moving and, uh, and the need for people who can master this hard material is, uh, is ever increasing. You know, I hope that uh, the students will be inspired both by our love for algorithms and by our enthusiasm for the uh, subject matter. It's really, pr I think, pretty neat um, uh, technology. In the last um, uh, uh, even eight years, uh, how many companies have been founded you know, with an algorithms uh, basis and how successful they've been by having some understanding of it. So I think the more students and, and practitioners can become familiar uh, with algorithms, the better uh, the code will see, the, the more value will be created in our economy, and, uh, and the more fun uh, people will have with uh, notions of computing and computer science.